wedding of the damned took place at the Church of Nacre's Perfection. The marriage was approved by a unanimous nosebleed. The happy couple exchanged their room temperature vows, while the father of the bride looked on wearing a lead cowl. A Pan-American tycoon, famous for his mildewed heroism, he'd made his money selling hallucinations. Before that, he'd sold turned-up shoes to leprechauns. Nowadays, though, he was just a vampire of the apocalypse. The wedding reception was held at a diamond-studded townhouse. It was a grand affair, so I wore my second best overall. The buffet was a five-star feast and a gourmand's paradise. Luckily, I'd come prepared. I'd taken a packed lunch. A well-read polka dart was arguing with a moth-eaten statistic as I took my place at the table of the damned. I feigned interest in this conversation, but became increasingly annoyed by its elliptical impertinence. The old link from boredom, I thought I'd try my luck upstairs. I drifted from room to room but found nothing of interest. Just a cupboard with ten generations of the father's family who suffered from an ancient curse and were unable to die. After creosoting the avatar and laminating the geologist, I returned to the soiree still looking for someone to talk to. Eventually the choice fell between a soft-boiled aristocrat and a man with a melting face and a cockroach moustache. I held my nerve until the entertainment was about to start. The booking was Percy the Human Powerboat. I'd noticed him earlier sitting looking disconsolate with an overweight cormorant nesting in his armpit. I was no fan of Percy who I knew in a previous life, back when I used to play piano in the Wild West. In those days he was working his way through the Kama Sutra on his own. I made my excuses and left while it was still light. In the bluish irreconcilable distance, I could see my assistant Zerk on the keyhole riding towards me on Clive, his trusted thermometer. Hi ho, Clive, he cried. Hi ho, Clive.